coming to you from MCC North Express. This is our next session of the Home Instead Aging Well series. And today we are talking about smart technology. So technological advances can directly affect the aging, but can technology be harnessed to increase brain activity, to improve lives, to decrease isolation? Well, the answer is yes. And here today to talk to us about that is Shan Wilkins from Home Instead. I just want to mention before we get started that we do have someone monitoring the chat. So if you have any comments or any questions, we have saved some time at the end to address your questions. Shan, thank Hi. you for being with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So this is a topic that has gotten a lot of attention, smart technology. So I thought we'd start with a bit of a recent statistic. So the Pew Institute found that technology among seniors is at a lower rate than the general population, but this group is more digitally connected than ever. And as a matter of fact, 51% of older Americans say they've bought some form of a tech product in the last year. Doesn't surprise me. Did it say what type of tech product was the leading one? We have a slide, but the leading one, I believe, was a smart telephone. Yeah, so I was, I was hoping that was the one because the old flip phones and the phones that used to slide up and you had the keyboard, um, the companies have eliminated those. So if you have one, my understanding is you'll have to replace it with a smartphone of some sort within the next year, I believe. So that does not surprise me that they've had to buy a smartphone. And there's, they're a lot of fun once you figure out um, how to use them. And so most of the companies that you buy the phones from, if you buy it from your cellular company or straight from like an Apple phone, you can buy it from Apple itself they all offer some sort of class. So people can take those and become familiar with their smart device, because it's basically a mini computer, and that can be intimidating for some. Right, it's a mini computer in your back pocket. Right. Now the onset of the pandemic has really caused a shift in how we meet and how we get together, and it's always evolving. So right now in our current environment, we have, uh, there's a fine balance between, there are more people getting vaccinated. The rate in Nebraska right now, I believe is at 17%. But then there's also this slow rise in cases. Can you talk a little bit about how technology can be used to help seniors nimbly adjust to this ever-changing environment? Yeah, well, um, they can keep in touch with their loved one uh, via Zoom calls or phone to phone calls. Um, they can keep pictures of their family ones on their smart devices. They can keep videos. They can send videos too. It's not hard at all to go to the picture function on a phone and hit video and they can videotape a message. And then just at the bottom, there's an arrow up and, that, and then you can send it to whoever you want. So that's a way that um, the smart technology has helped them. Uh, there are more seniors than ever that have iPads and we have our grand pad. Um, seniors are using those to stay in touch, uh, engage in activities, games, listen to music, uh, recipes, all kinds of things, you name it. You can pretty much interact on the internet with what you used to physically have to, to do to interact. So there's all sorts of options online that exist right now. Uh, to talk with family, to talk with friends, and to stay connected. And you really don't have to be that tech savvy. So doing the basics is easy and it's a lot of fun to do mm -hmm. as a family activity or to do, uh, to have fun with your friends, to have all of this at your fingertips. Can you talk a little bit, you mentioned the Grand Pad. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so the Grand Pad um, is for our clients to stay engaged with their family, to stay engaged in activities that they like to do. It's, um, it's secure, so it can't be hacked, but what I really like about it is you can be anywhere, literally in a place that doesn't have Wi-Fi um, or maybe a great cellular service, and that will work. I had a caregiver and a client last year call me from a park just to say hi and check in and show me what they were doing. And I was just like, where are you? 
we were at Memorial Park and they literally were in the middle of the park. I thought that was great. Um, so that's what I like about it. And I like the fact that it's secure. So you program in who can contact the grand pad and you program in um, say a family member list people and then the client can also tell us who they would like. So it's, it's a way to prevent fraud. Um, emails go through that. So it's not a big device. You can carry it in your purse. You can make lists on it. Um, you can play games. Music is on there too, especially with um, our, pay our clients that have dementia. The music is a great uh, stimulator for them and they love it, but uh, just a ton of stuff. You can, um, we do client care uh, meetings. So we'll check in with our clients and our caregivers with the grand pads. So we save time from having to drive and we can be instantly contacted also by our clients in case of emergencies or anything like that, where they're not having to figure out how to get to a smartphone or something like that. They push a button and they can get a hold of home instead or a family member in case of an emergency. And then there's the visual too. So it, just not a phone, but we, you can see what the environment is and what's going on. Well, it sounds like it's really empowering as a way to keep in touch and it's beneficial for caregivers, but what has the response been to clients actually using this grant pad? At first it was slow, but now um, it's better. So I would say probably 85% of our existing clients in Douglas County do use their grand pad. And our caregivers use it too, to interact um, with clients every day. So if they wanna do a cooking activity, they go and watch, they can watch a video or get a recipe off the grand pad. If they want to listen to certain types of music, they can go to the grand pad. They're not having to go to a stereo or that type of thing. So about 80% at this point. What's really interesting in doing research for this part of our home wellness series, uh, tablet use among the general population is going down, but really among seniors, it's going up. So this plays into that, actually learning how to utilize the technology. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like uh, my kids informed me that they don't use Facebook anymore because that's for older people. And I'm I've like, heard this as well. Yeah, I'm like, really? Um, so yeah, it's, I think um, individuals are finding how easy they are to carry with them. Um, they have pictures of what you can point and do so you're not clicking on a keyboard necessarily and you know looking for something. So it's, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that they're using those more and more. Well, you mentioned Facebook, so let's talk a little bit about some of the software that's out there for seniors to utilize. Facebook, mm -hmm. Zoom has become a really popular one. Yep, Zoom. Uh, there's So if we're talking about for exercising, there's Map My Walk, which is really a fun app to use. Um, people have, there used to be a commercial about three years ago where you saw this gentleman running and then he gets home and he puts a piece of paper down in front of his wife and it's a heart and it was the, his walk. And so we're finding people that are doing different designs with their walk and making it fun, and then they can print that out. But they also know how many steps they took, how many calories they burned. Um, they're able to take that, log it, and show their doctors, their caregivers, that type of thing. So there's uh, that app, there's all kinds of game apps, music apps. Um, if you like to listen, you know, people used to listen to radios. Well, podcast has replaced radio shows, and so you can have Spotify, Pandora, um, Google, Apple, all have podcasts on them. And it's just a push of a button and picking your uh, podcast and saving them. Also, reading. People don't have to carry a book around anymore. They can have their iPad, click on an app, and they can have a whole library of books. So. Yeah, there's lots of, of things for people to do, and it's not hard to download any of these, and it doesn't take very long either, like seconds to download an app, so. Just so many ways to engage right now. I talked with someone recently who's in their 70s, and she had never used any of this technology, but she started using it, and I asked her why, and she said, because this is the way of the world now. Oh, so yeah. she's using it for exercise, she was using it for church, and she was using it to stay in contact with her grandkids. Yeah, so the contact one is pretty interesting. Um, there's, on Apple, an Apple device, you have Find My Location. So you can share with certain people 
where you're at and you can turn it on and off. Most people um, were, I found a lot of people using it for their children, but I had a client, I got a giggle out of this, um, said that she told me I bought my mom an Apple Watch. And I said, you did, how does she like it? Oh, she loves it, but guess why I wanted her to have it? And I said, why? And she's like, I can never find her. She doesn't answer her phone. So I turned on the find my location on the watch and on her computer, her phone or her iPad, she can find where her mom is at. And I'm like, where do, where do you think your mom's at? She goes, well, what if she's fallen and she, you know, she, she needs help or something and she can't um, get any help. And I'm like, okay, where have you found her at? Well, I found her out shopping and <laughs> socializing a lot. But so I thought that was interesting. And um, there's also uh, people use Cortana or Siri in their homes on those devices too for just the similar thing of turn on lights, um, I've fallen, call so-and-so. So yeah, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of ways that the technology can help. Well, I would imagine that, um, for example, the Find My Location would provide peace of mind for everyone mm -hmm. because the mom doesn't have to be hassled and question right. about where exactly. she is. Exactly. And then the daughter has peace of mind knowing, okay, she's okay. She's just at right. Marshalls. Right. And it's not an invasive, um, so you don't see the role reversal where the parent feels like they're being treated like a child. And you have to turn it on. You know, the, the gal that got her watch eventually made her daughter turn on her so she could see where her daughter was at. Um, but I think once we get older, we don't care so much if our parents know where we're at. But. Um, I would have to say that I do utilize the smart technology tracking device. I have teenagers, and they track me as well. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, my kids track me. My daughter's traveling today, and I'm tracking her, so I can see where she's at because she's flying, and so yeah. No, my kids track me for their personal requests. They'll say, "I see you're at Trader Joe's. Pick me up this." Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> I haven't got that one yet for my husband, but I'm sure he will now. <laughs> So there's FaceTime, Zoom, Skype. Skype yep. is another one. Mm -hmm. Twitter. There's so many. You can just Google a video call or whatever search engine you use, and a lot of them will come up. And I just, my preference is to look at the rating. So if I see a product or an app has a, a four-star rating, I'm going to look at that one first as to possibly use. So there's, there's just a ton. You name it, it's out there. And if it feels daunting, it's something that usually if you ask a neighbor, niece, nephew, grandchild, someone can assist. Yeah, I like that commercial with the coupon clipper. I can't think of the app's name where the gal is explaining it looks like to her grandma. Um, I'm going to put this on your toolbar of your search engine. And anytime you go to purchase something, it will automatically search for a coupon for you. So yeah, so anybody, um, just ask and I'm sure you can be pointed in the right direction to get help with, with the different programs. So we've talked a little bit about video chatting, but video chatting isn't just for teens anymore. No, no. Um, we have, well, it, it depends on what kind of chatting you want to do. So there is the basic Zoom, Skype, uh, Teams, those types of chatting, but there's also um, people are using a platform called Twitch to do videos, or um, maybe they're doing an activity and they have a nice computer with a camera. So they'll, t they'll go live and interact with their family. And then they're taping the videos for later use, like a home movie. So that's another platform where people can interact. They're not only um, able to interact and tape themselves, but they're also playing, I saw a family playing Monopoly the other night with on the Twitch platform. Um, chest, it, it just, it makes, it's, and then other people can watch them too. So anyway, it's fun, it's fun. So yeah, there's all kinds. Just a really interesting way to engage. And it's not that it would necessarily replace that. It's just, it's another way to engage, especially as these times um, as things are changing all the time. Well, and what I found out is people are having problems on their computers, you can through Google, I don't know about other um, applications, but you can take over a loved one's computer for them while they're sitting at them at it and get something installed for them. I did it for my mom. So remote access. Yes, through Google, it's free. Um, 
And then Google also has a phone. You know, you hit the, if you look at your email, there's a phone down there. Um, you can call a number for free. It's just amazing at the technology that is out there to keep people engaged and communicating with the outside world. So now while older Americans are increasingly using technology, some of them don't feel comfortable because they're concerned about privacy issues? Yes, and that is something very valid. So you wanna look at your settings, but here's the thing, it's on every application that you're using that you need to be checking your security s settings. Um, I will see pop-ups. I'll be trying to do something and I'll get a pop-up from an app or a website, and sometimes I just click OK. Never do that. Always look, because they want to know if they can track your location. They want to know if they can track your history. They want to know if they can share your history search with other platforms and apps. So depending on your comfort level with all that, I recommend that you just don't go, OK, OK, OK. You look at the pop-ups that are coming up, but you also um, go into your settings and set your security. Um, Facebook has security settings. Uh, YouTube has security settings. Just about any platform that you interact on on the internet does have um, settings for security. And if, like I said, if you can't figure it out, one of your kids can take over your computer and help you do it. And you bring up a really good point of checking those apps individually to see what the privacy settings are on those apps individually and not taking it for granted. Say, for example, Facebook, they update all the time and could change your settings just in an update. Yeah, and so what's interesting about Facebook is you really do, when you go into the app and the security settings, you really need to read them. Um, most people don't realize, and this is my last knowledge, so I don't think this has changed, but any picture you put on the Facebook in your album, it belongs to Facebook. It no longer belongs to you. So, you know, reading the security settings, reading the information about yourself that you're giving away, because you're giving that away, you're giving that to the platform. And so you have to know, I think it's wise to know and be educated on what information about yourself you're giving away. And that's, you know, so I think about that, any picture I've ever put out on Facebook, I don't own it anymore. Something to, to think about, and that's in security and in settings you can read about how not to um, give them that privilege. Yeah, that's a great thing to look into because especially as there are some things that are assumed, like assuming, okay, I have my privacy settings uh, set a certain way, but really you have to look at those individual settings to see what you're giving permission to. Because anytime you go into any app, practically they say, hey, can I track you? Yeah. Can I have access to your photos? And that's a part of the of educating oneself about the, the smart technology. Yeah, so it's interesting, and um, I, was, I was told this, and then I started looking for it, but I was searching um, just the other day for uh, trips to New Orleans. Never Googled or looked for a trip to New Orleans. And then since then, periodically, I will have ads pop up for New Orleans. And I'm like, okay. And even on the TV, so if you have an Apple TV and you use apps to watch TV, um, your commercials, that algorithm, they figure out what you're doing and what you want to see, and it will even pop up on your TV. Um, I had friends that um, were at another friend's home, and they were like, I'm never getting Cortana, and I was like, now why is that? And they're like, I was just sitting there visiting and I said I was interested in the stock market. And do you know how many apps, I, how many pop-ups I got about the stock market? And I'm like, really, really? But it does, it is true, it, it, it does track things. So um, you have to be you know, cautious about this on security clearances and, and look at every single app, go into your phone under settings. Um, and it will list out the apps and, and stuff like that. And, and you can decide what you want to share on your smart devices. And then, but it's per device too. So just keep right. that it's in mind. It's per device, it's per app. So really, again, that educational piece. We have a, a class coming up this summer that really explains how those algorithms work. Um, because as you said, it, they, they're listening 
right. and they market to you, but there are some adjustments that you can make in your settings. Yeah. I was talking to someone on the phone uh, about a work-related activity about art supplies. Then all of a sudden, all these uh, advertising pieces come up for art supplies, something so random and something that and you, you were on your phone about. you didn't even google it right you were just it, it was nothing that was googled just talking about it mm -hmm. hanging up and then having these art supplies pop up so that's just a piece of the smart technology there's this piece where it's very empowering and it makes a lot of things accessible but then just the education piece about uh, how the algorithms work, why certain things are being marketed to you, why certain news stories show up to only you. Right, and I don't want to deter people from using smart technology because I don't believe a lot of people are nefarious at heart and that build these programs and that type of stuff. Um, you know, it's it's great. Hy-Vee, all the, the grocery store apps will track your grocery list and make it easier for you to make a grocery list. So there's there's a lot of benefits, but like you said, just beware of what every app in your security settings and adjust those. And then you'll feel more empowered to use those apps too. Right, especially once you know how they're working. Mm -hmm. uh, so speaking of social media, right now, three quarters of adults age 50 and over do use social media on a regular basis, primarily Facebook, followed by YouTube, Instagram, and then LinkedIn. In. And I guess the next one is TikTok. Yeah, TikTok is yeah. becoming pretty popular. It's a way to for someone to just share their story and hear the stories of others. Yeah, just like in a minute or less. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, I don't even use Instagram. Is that one of those? Instagram is one Ooh, of those. Interesting, yeah. Um, I use Facebook. I have Facebook. Um, what was a couple of the other ones? Instagram, LinkedIn, the, the number one is Facebook followed yeah. by YouTube, then Instagram and LinkedIn. Yeah, YouTube is has a lot of different platforms. So you can watch videos, you can make videos, you can um, interact in a group uh, on YouTube live with other people. And so then, and you can create your own channel. Who would have thought, you know, it used to just be ABC, NBC, and CBS, but you can, you can be your own social media star and that's how people are doing it. They're creating their own channel, their own platforms. Uh, Facebook is the most popular. It has uh, organically grown. You have, you can have a Facebook page for your business. I know a lot of people don't even do websites anymore. They just have a Facebook page. Then you can have groups and people are interacting and chatting. I'm amazed at, I'll watch um, Dateline or 48 Hours and it's amazing how they'll talk to uh, just private citizens that are investigating the crime and it's always Facebook that they're sharing they're going back and forth sharing the information and chatting Facebook has an app that you can get on your phone where you can instead of dialing your phone for someone you can push that app and then pick the person you want to call or you just want to message them and you don't you don't have to you know use your message app you use Facebook so it's yeah Facebook is pretty popular the other ones LinkedIn that's a professional one right so I'm I'm not I at first I would be surprised but when I think about it I'm not because our aging adults are a large part of our workforce right so that does not surprise me at all and it is a good platform professionally to meet people and and make network out there so that doesn't when I think about it doesn't surprise me yep a way to stay connected yeah yeah Let's talk a little bit about telemedicine because previously to the pandemic, a lot of times it was used in rural areas, mm -hmm. um, unless you're in maybe a major city. And now it's being used more widely, mm -hmm. especially since a lot of times you can't send seniors out into certain areas because they are the most at risk. So yeah, it used to just be um, for rural areas that did not have healthcare providers and the uh, Medicare, and insurance companies would only pay for it that way. Uh, due to the pandemic, it was opened up to all, all communities. And it has been a huge help. Um, I think it's been a benefit. Yes, people in the metro areas and big cities can get to a doctor, but even before the pandemic, sometimes it just wasn't good for them, whether it be a physical um, condition, for whatever reason, it just wasn't good for them. To, to go out to the doctor. So 
there's like, where do you want to start? You can monitor your heart. You can monitor any organ. Um, you can you can hook yourself up for a sleep study, and they'll remotely monitor that. So you don't even have to to necessarily go to a clinic for that anymore. Um, you can do physical therapy with a therapist, a, a trainer. Uh, if you're trying to lose weight, um, you know, mental health has always been very popular with the the smart technology. Um, pharmacies are st I'm seeing all the time now. Pharmacies are popping up. If you're a female and you know you can talk to this provider via telehealth and we'll prescribe your medicine and so yeah you just you can do eye exams too i've just recently read over the phone now how that works i'm not sure but <laughs> okay i mean and just think about it as a convenience you know your loved one isn't taking off work to take you to a doctor's appointment you know and so that time you get your loved one isn't stressed and then they have more time to when they do take off work to do something they would enjoy to do with you instead of something, a chore that they have to do. Well, it's pretty amazing that this need rose out of the pandemic. So even though the pandemic's been stressful and it's really had, uh, it's, it's been a disruption for many, there are some things that have come out of it that have been beneficial. And this telemedicine is a trend that looks like it's going to continue to grow. Yeah, and I think it should grow. I, I think um, it's just an excellent way. I think more people will stay out of the ERs with this technology as it advances, as it becomes more familiar to people. I think we'll see less ER visits, less hospital stays, because people will have a resource to get to their healthcare provider sooner than calling, making an appointment that could be two or three days out, and then driving to that appointment. So I guess all that overhead goes away, and you know, you could be talking to a doctor within an hour or two, because I've realized that a lot of um, the healthcare organizations have set providers aside to just schedule telehealth visits every day, and then also fit in the non-scheduled telehealth visit. So if you have something that comes up, you usually can talk to your provider with, within that same day. Well, and I've talked with a doctor recently who said, um, especially when COVID was surging, that due to his age, he saw all of his patients uh, via telemedicine. And it was just something that was required because he was at risk as well, just because of his age. And so that was a shift in his industry. Yeah, and what's interesting is, um, you know, you see a doctor and they want you to have labs drawn. Okay. Well, you leave that you leave your doctor's office and then you go get labs drawn. Well, if you see your doctor and you're talking to them over telehealth, yes, you you still have to go to the lab and get your lab drawn, but he can see they can see results of how you're doing through blood draws and and interacting with other providers as well. So yeah, that that doesn't surprise me. A lot of doctors, um, you know, they had to think about themselves, about their family, about you know, if they were gonna have to do surgeries and that, you know, how much exposure. So that does not surprise me. Now there is an emerging market for aging and that emerging market is uh, home security. Yeah, so that's kind of fun. Uh, it's true that the uh, smart technology doorbells do work. You can be anywhere and if you're not at home and you, somebody rings your doorbell or because you have a camera with that, a sensor will go off and it'll come up on your smart device and you can talk <laughs> to the person that's on your porch. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, and you can just, even if you don't want to go in that route, you can have cameras, sensory cameras. So you, if you have a vacation home or you're, um, and say you're at your, your, you're not at your vacation home, you can be anywhere and see who's walking on your property with these smart uh, cameras that they have now. You can monitor at any time. So I'm not saying don't use ADT and stuff, but there's some technology that's pretty user friendly and you can have somebody come out and install those for a reasonable cost. And I know a lot of snowbirds that use that. And it's something that just provides peace of mind. So you mentioned seeing who's at the front door. Mm -hmm. You can uh, turn on and off appliances if you've ever left something oh, you on. You can even make your grocery list on your fridge now. Right. Yeah. That's pretty How amazing is that. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Um, and it can all be done. Uh, I know Apple has a home smart app. So you, you tell this app what you want 
it to help you control and it will do it and you can put it on timers and you can turn the timers off or yeah it's pretty amazing they even have smart um, lights now yes smart lights so my son has one of those lights and he has it set to turn on as his alarm so it'll just oh, come on at 6 a.m. That's a good idea. And you control it with your phone. Mm -hmm. And so you can turn lights on, turn lights off, monitor doors and windows. And even some of the devices can detect a fall or get emergency help. Yeah, so that is true. You do have to wear a device, either some type of neck or, or have a smartwatch on, I believe. Or you have to have your phone with you. Um, but yes, they can detect when you have fallen the new... Um, the new commercial out for the Apple watches are you can do a cardiogram with your phone. And I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. So yeah, they can detect falls and they do that just because they, like anything else, they know when you're standing, when you're sitting, if you're walking, if you're not walking, if your heartbeat has accelerated or decreased. So yes, and then you can program it to tell it who to call, you know, and you can voice tell, program it, um, to say to let your phone know if you say i have fallen i need help it will automatically call somebody it's pretty it's pretty impressive such a support and peace of mind for family peace of mind for individuals wanting to maintain their uh, individuality and mm -hmm. and uh, stay at home yeah no more um uh, what are the big the big necklaces the big pendants and that you know that commercial i've fallen and i can't get up um, you have Siri now too that you can even program it to remind you to take your medication or tell you you haven't taken your medication. So I'm supposed to take my medication at five and you can program it to say at 5.15 if I haven't taken it, send me another reminder. It can start your car. Um, I could, did not believe it till I saw it, but like even the Tesla, the Tesla car can be programmed to turn on at a certain time and drive up to your door to pick you up on its wow. own. Wow. Yeah, I'm like, whoa. Um, so yeah, you can literally program it to do just about anything. Yeah, the, there's been so many amazing developments. I remember when I was a kid, that old commercial that was the clapper, clap on, oh, clap yeah, off. Yeah. So these are a little bit more technologically mm -hmm. advanced than the clapper. Yeah, so I, um, if you have the Google Voice box or the Amazon one, you can just pro and you buy these lights you can program them to just voice say turn on light and you can pick the color or the mood of the light um, they have light bulbs now with remote controls so if you don't want to get too tech technical but maybe you do want some blue lighting or green lighting you they have a remote control for that they have up front is um, some strips that you can lay down on your steps pretty easily or wherever and as you walk they just turn on and those aren't connected to a smart device but you can buy those kind too that are connected to your smart device. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking a lot about smart devices and how individuals can adopt some of the, these devices but there's these more high-tech devices and then there's some basic low-tech things that you can do just using low-tech things smarter that can also support better living. Can you talk about, we yeah. have a, a bunch of different things here that can uh, support that. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, those? so we have the infuser for, um, so people like candles. They like them, they like the way they smell. Um, families have started using these for um, aging adults to have. They get that nice, um, smell in their home but they're not lighting a candle so it's not uh, a fire hazard that can be programmed by your phone um, we have the clock there that you can uh, charge up your smart device and it's bigger so you know you can't see your phone and if you use it for an alarm you're always you know trying to grab for it in the morning this has a big clock you can plug in your phone charge it but it will read what time you want your alarms to go off I thought that was pretty impressive. And then just um, low technology is the press light. That takes a battery, but it's very large. And so all the person has to do is walk in and hit it. And then their closet has more lighting versus the clap on, clap off um, light. And that is low tech. It, it's a battery, but it's large and you don't have to wire it. So yeah, 
That's uh, that's one. And then, do you want me to keep going? Yeah, let's let's look at these. So this I found. Um, so people that want to be green friendly, they have these silicone bags now. Um, you can use them in your kitchen. They're clear, they have different colors. People use them to store stuff in their purses so they can see. But you can just throw these in the dishwasher and reuse them and you're environmentally friendly. So um, I, I liked those. Uh, let's see, this is probably my favorite. I have, I take care of people that may have arthritis in their hands and so they can't get a glove on or they can't hold a dog brush or cat brush. They can just put this on, and I got this at the dollar store, and then they can brush their pet, and you can get your hand in it pretty easily. So I thought that was well. That's pretty, pretty cool. interesting because we know there are psychological benefits mm -hmm. to petting a pet that it yep. reduces your heart rate and increases feelings of well-being, and now you can still do that. Yeah, and you don't like I said, if you don't have the dexterity to hold that pet brush or a brush, um, or your hands are stiff and they don't fit in a you know the the finger one you can simply use this and I thought I thought oh that's great so the tennis balls um, yeah what's that all about because you mentioned dexterity so I was wondering about those tennis balls so that's a trick that um, I have used with patients who have had strokes or um, arthritis where they can't grip a small um, brush you know this is kind of small you can slit take a put a slit in a tennis ball and attach it to the end of a toothbrush and that's bigger and people can get their hand on that and they can brush their teeth. It allows them their dignity and independence. You know, it's a little thing like that. Uh, tennis balls, if you've ever seen a walker, sometimes you'll see tennis balls on the bottom of walkers. Um, that helps people remember to pick them up instead of sliding them. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of uses uh, for those. And then, this is probably my favorite. So if you have someone that is living alone and they're older and they don't get to clean their house as often as they like, um, spray on air wax, which is the car wax. You can spray it on your metal, metal vents, dust them off first, spray this, and they stay dust free for up to 30 to 60 days. I'm in week two. I'm gonna incorporate so, that. Yeah, and I was like, really? I'm gonna have to try that. It, it works. Um, Do you have anything, for example, uh, asking for a friend? Uh, the pickle jars aren't opening as easily as they used to. Yes. So, and don't feel like because you're old, you ha you you know, it's not only the aging that have to use these. Um, so here it is, and this is the device that you use to open jars. It's better than pounding on the jar. It's better than pounding the lid on your counter or running it under hot water. And I got this at Target. Um, I think it was $7.99. So I, yeah, this one will be in my drawer. Here's kind of a low tech, but speaking of COVID. So I've seen these for younger people, but this is the, which you can use to touch the pads at the grocery store instead of using your fingers and it's nice and big. So one, you can see it in your purse, but it doesn't matter how old you are. If you carry a big purse, this is great. Um, but it's also large enough, so you can, you can grasp it and use it. And then um, this is another one of my favorites. Uh, so bending over. Oh. So these you just pop in your toilet and they'll self-clean your toilet and you don't have to lift off the lid and hook something in or drop a, a round tablet in. These you just pop on inside the toilet bowl. So I thought that was awesome. And they keep stored, so child-friendly if you have grandkids that come over. And then the rug, we have rug protectors. You can get them at any hardware store, Target, uh, Walmart. So if you have rugs in your home, they'll come up. you trip over them. That will help if you put those down underneath the rug you're gonna have less trips and stuff because the rugs aren't, aren't gonna move around. Um, I have clients that take Velcro and they put them on pillows so the pillows aren't moving around on their couches or their cushions or that, that type of thing too. Well, that's such a great idea because tripping is detrimental at any age. It's just, it affects seniors more if you fall, but it's detrimental at any age. Right, and it's 3.99 and you just, 
and it, they're not hard, it's tape. They also have, you can buy a roll, so pretty easy, but I like the tape. Um, just even if you have company coming over and you know you don't want your rugs to be moving all over your house or something like that. So that's a good way to get it into your loved one's home without them thinking, oh, you think I'm old. Um, I like these for any age. Uh, you put these in your crock pots and then you just lift out the bag when you're done and so you don't have to scrub that crock pot out. Um, some people have dishwashers. A lot of people that live in assisted livings and smaller uh, apartments don't have a dishwasher. So these are great because they do use the crock pot a lot for meals. I use that. It's such a time saver. Yeah. Oh yeah, that too. Um, this is one of my favorites. So if you use this in your microwave over your plate, you won't get the splatter. And so time saving, um, less having to clean, be exposed to chemicals, and that's any age, but especially for seniors. And then um, these are the ones I found, but they do make them in all kinds of designs and so they can look like normal plates, but these are the microwave friendly plates. In other words, when you grab them out, you're not gonna burn yourself. So, and they have the bowls too. And this, if you take and fill a microwave safe bowl up with hot water and just turn it on for five minutes, it will steam your microwave. So then you just wipe it and you're not scrubbing it. So those are just friendly little. A lot of good uh, time saving devices. Yeah, yeah. Well, we did promise that we would save some time for questions at the end. And so I'm gonna to toss a few your way. Okay. Many older adults uh, don't see well or have hand tremors that make it difficult to tap on a screen. This is often the reason for refusing a smartphone. What do you recommend? So in the settings, you can make <clears throat> your phone larger. So those apps are larger. Um, you can use something like this or they have the pins now with the, the they're called stylist. Um, and you can put a tennis ball on it to help with the, sh you know, if you shake or you, you can't touch it like that. You can use a stylus with a, a larger stylus or put a tennis ball on the bottom or use one of these to tap your screen um, to get to that uh, application that you want to. But I recommend going in settings and uh, just like you would changing your font size same kind of thing. You're changing the, the view of your, your smart device. So those apps are bigger. So you're not, they're not so small. That's such a great recommendation because you can change the size of the apps. You can even change the responsiveness of the mouse or yep. The, yep. You the, can, the, the, the arrow so that it's not so fast or not so, so right. just however you need it to it be. It will follow your, bigger. yeah, it'll follow your, your ability visually on the mouse and that type of thing. Even on your devices on your, um, I think some iPads have the mouse and so, or an app will have it. So yeah, you can, you can change that, especially when you wanna play solitaire like me, mine's really big. Another question from our chat. How does one acquire a grand pad and what is the cost? So Home Instead, if you're a Home Instead client, uh, that comes with our service. And then if you do not have Home Instead and you would like a grand pad, you can go to the grand pad um, webpage and it goes over all the costs and stuff involved with getting one. I believe some retail stores have them as well. Shan, what's the biggest barrier between aging populations and using smart technology? I think older adults are, you know, I've learned enough. I don't want to learn anything new. I lived so many years without that. Why do I got to, you know, which I can appreciate myself. Um, so I think learning that, but then not only that, but it becomes, how do I learn it? You know, why can't I just figure this out myself? So I think um, companies need to do a better job with letting people know the websites where they can go and watch the videos, um, how to use something. I love YouTube. I have become an Excel expert with YouTube Excel videos. So there's videos out there for your smart devices. If you want to know, like we're talking about settings. So you can go to YouTube, um, change 
uh, font size and app size on my Apple phone. You can go to YouTube, type that in, and literally you'll find a million choices of videos to watch. So you get that step by step and you can pause the video and then do it and so it's great. And Shan, we were talking about TikTok a little earlier. What's interesting about TikTok is there's such a wide variety of information and there's information on there about this exact topic. Mm -hmm. And once the algorithm gets to know you, then it recommends things that you actually like. So if this is a topic, yeah. I could recommend that. And you can also search on any one of these uh, apps that like TikTok and Facebook, if you put in cleaning hacks or you put in um, how to use my smart, my Apple smartphone, or what what case should I buy for my phone? You know, um, all kinds of things. So yes, there's tons of ways to learn, but I think that's the biggest barrier is just how do I learn to use it? Because it's intimidating. It's, it was interesting to me. I watched a video a couple of weeks ago, of, and so this is reversal, but I. I could see how a senior might feel about a smart device, about a smartphone. So they put a rotary phone in front of three teenagers, 16, 17, and 18. <laughs> they did not know how to use it. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't, they were talking without, you know, they were just talking to the phone or they would, when they did figure out that it was rotary, they would just dial and then talk. They, none of them thought to lift up the receiver. So a little bit of reverse there, you know, so the same, you gotta learn how to use something. And to me, I'm like, come on, you couldn't figure that out? So Technology, if, yeah. uh, older technology. Yeah. yeah, so it can be intimidating, it can be intimidating. How would you recommend introducing an older loved one to smart technology? Uh, make it fun, make sure it's uh, like the grand pad, it's lightweight. You, it can be held or you can put um, a case around it so it can be held. They have uh, a lot of cases uh, for people to be able to hold it. And then, like I said, the, the applications need to be larger and just use it with your loved one, but find something like if they like to cook, engage it with something they like to do so that they'll want to engage with that, that product. So we have talked a lot about connection and um, how important connection is. But let's talk a little bit about online dating. So the desire for more romantic companionship doesn't end when you hit a certain age. And right now in the United States, the number one fraud in America is romantic fraud. Yeah. And we have a, a Home Instead series coming up uh, in a couple of months that talks about fraud and loved ones. But um, what do you think about online dating and different websites? I mean, there are some options to check out. Um, so I had to learn this too. When your parents get older, that does not mean that they don't want to continue to live their life. They're not going to go sit in their home and not do anything. So I think you have to, before you start using an online dating service like anything else, read the reviews. There's always reviews. So I would recommend and then going into your settings and, and don't put too much information out there about yourself. Uh, don't, and never put like, um, you know, leave me a message before this date because I'm gonna be on vacation for <laughs> so many days, things like that. So I would just decide on what uh, platform you wanna use and then read the reviews about it. Usually these platforms will police, so they don't wanna have bad actors trying to engage on their platform so they will automatically um, suspend them. So I would just make sure you look at the reviews and, and talk to other people too. You know, if you're wanting to date online, I'm sure you have friends that also wanna date online or they have dated online. So ask them what their experiences have been with these platforms. We have another question okay. from the chat. Where can we get more information on how our internet usage is tracked and tips to deter this? And I do want to mention while you're thinking about that, that we actually have an MCC non-credit class coming up in the summer that talks exactly about this. It talks about um, how your info's tracked. It talks about how there's this algorithm and now they're using AI to actually attract you to you. 
so the different, uh, the different things out there, but all of these things can be addressed in the setting, like you said. It can. And depending on the apps that you uh, uh, typically choose to engage in as well. So I, I can speak for Google. I, can, I believe you can Google my activity. If you Google, in Google, show me my internet activity, there'll be a variety of options for you to go and track that. You can even find out how fast your internet is going. Um, there's uh, internet uh, speedgo.com or something like that. So yeah, I would just Google, um, how can I see who's tracking my activity on my smart devices? And there'll be websites that'll show you how to do that. There is something on the Apple devices that can show you in the settings, there's a program. I, off the top of my head, I don't know how to get to it. But, or you can call Apple support and just ask them. But usually on a Samsung or an Apple device or something like that, it will be on their web page too. You can also type that in. How do I see who's tracking me? So I just learned about Google and how they track last, uh, last week. And so I went into my settings and it has a list of everything that they are using to market to you. Mm -hmm. And so it's there, you have to look for it, and you can opt to turn that off. So um, instead of having it send things to you that it knows that you'll like, I mean, some, some like that, but if you don't want it to actually actively market to you, you can turn that off. And that's what I did. I went in and turned that off in my Google settings. Well, and Google also will keep track of your passwords for you, which I, I love that because I hate resetting a password, but I mean, that's how it's just, it's detailed. It's, it's the least thing. They probably know what kind of eyeshadow and the brand you buy um, more than you do, you know? So yeah, it's just all about the settings and, and deciding what you want to share. Um, as we're looking on the smart technology, there are some ways um, to stay active. They're just general, um, information on just how to stay active, staying active in your community, enrolling in a class. But Shan, can you speak a little bit about how being socially active, whether it's the combination of virtual at home, how does that keep adults healthy? Oh, in every way, mentally, physically, spiritually. Um, you think about it, you can watch church online. There's the spiritual part. You can interact with your family. Um, emotionally, you can interact with your friends, family. Um, you can also give back to the community, whether it's reading a book to a school uh, child at school, you know, you physically can't volunteer anymore, but you can use your smart device to still volunteer. Uh, so in every way you can think of, uh, getting your groceries delivered, you know, you don't have to go out to the store anymore and you can, so your, your nutrition is, is good. You can talk to your doctor, so in every way, it, it's a good thing if used properly. Reducing stress, um, seniors feel stronger connections if they're staying at home for whatever reason and, and can't go out and socialize and actually reduces stress and, and it continues to build those connections. Well, just sharing your calendars with your loved ones. I mean, you know, mom thought she had an appointment today and she's upset that her daughter isn't there to pick her up. Well, if you're sharing a calendar, a family calendar, and the appointments are there, she can look at the calendar and see, oh, my appointment isn't today, or it is today, let me contact my loved one, what's going on, why are they late? So it just, that little thing is a stress reducer. Anxiety lowers the anxiety. Absolutely, and helping just keep keeping the cognitive ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got to you've got to engage your cognitively to do all these activities on a device. So it's good. You can read the newspaper. You know, you used to get it um, in print, but you can you can still read all your your news. You just read it on your pad. Shan, I just want to thank you so much for oh. being with us here today because one thing we know about COVID and the pandemic is life has definitely been disrupted, but there are some adjustments and some good things that we can do to stay connected to each other. And I really appreciate looking at the high tech versus the low tech and using that combination that can just help things be better. Yeah, certainly. Thanks for having me. I want to mention coming up uh, next in our Home Instead series, next month we'll be talking about estate planning. And then our consumer fraud series will happen in June. And then we're going to take the month of July off 
And in August, we're gonna talk about conscious aging and seniors aging their way. For information about any of the topics we've discussed today or any classes that we may have available on these topics, please go to mccneb.edu backslash CE. I wanna thank you for joining us today for the Home Instead Aging Well series, and we will see you the next time.